welcome to everyone so today i am going to start refraction at spherical surface okay so in case of refraction at spherical surface there will be same rule for the refraction at the plane surfaces okay so see two types of spherical surfaces is there one is convex spherical surface convex spherical surface and another one is your concave spherical surface okay so two types of spherical surface so now convex spherical surface means what this is your convex spherical surface here this is the your denser medium which has refractive index n2 and this is your rarer medium which has refractive index n1 and some parts is what suppose if i consider this is your s s prime is the s s prime and the middle point is here what p p is known as what p is known as your pole okay p is known as pole and this convex spherical surface is also a part of sphere just like this way so it is also a part of sphere right this is also a part of sphere and what is the center of the sphere suppose the center of the sphere is here c okay so the c is known as center of curvature c is known as center of curvature right and c next one is c if you join this p and c line if you join this p point and c point so see here if i join the p point and c point this is p point and this is c point if you join this is known as your principal axis okay and pc this one is known as radius of curvature okay radius of curvature so this is some definitions regarding an s s prime if you join this s s prime then this is known as is known as the square line is known as aperture normally we are taking very small aperture okay and see this is the convex why because try to understand it is convex towards the rarer medium this is the rarer medium i am considering n1 is the rarer medium n2 is your denser medium n2 means refractive index of the denser medium and n1 is index of the rarer medium so see it is convex towards the rarer medium so i can say it as a convex spherical surface same way what is for the concave spherical surface so see here this is your denser medium denser medium has refractive index n2 rarer medium has n1 this is your s s prime is the spherical surface and the middle point is known as pole like this one pole and see it is also a part of sphere so this center of the sphere is known as center of curvature and if you join this pc line so then this is known as principal axis this straight line and pc is known as radius of curvature okay so these are some definition regarding the spherical surfaces and s if you join here s s prime this is known as aperture normally we are taking as what small aperture for the spherical surface so now let us discuss refraction through the spherical surfaces refraction through convex spherical surface this is the def here this is the topics so see now here i am considering that this is a convex spherical surface okay this is the denser medium it has writing here medium 2 its refractive index is your n2 this is rarer medium so it is medium number 1 and its refractive index is your n1 right so pole is where this is the pole here i am writing and 
S S prime is S P S prime is your what? S P S prime is your convex spherical surface. So now let's us consider if I consider this one. So see this is the principal axis and on this principal axis if I keep an object O okay so then if I keep an object O so then what is the incident ray so from O is the point object and from O a ray is incident on this spherical surface so see here here I am drawing this one so from O point so this is your this is I am considering this point is your a point right now what we will draw here if this is the spherical surface so the center is where the center is here this is the center of curvature okay and see if this is the center of curvature now what we will draw here if we draw a normal at point a if we draw a normal at point a this is the normal at point a so this normal must intersect through this c point right so this is the normal at point a so what is the angle of incidence angle of incidence means what incident ray is making the angle with the normal this is known as angle of incidence and that is denoted by i okay same way so after refraction through this then from this a point if I draw okay so this is angle of refraction this is the angle of refractions this is the angle of incidence now what I can this is one ray I have drawn and see this point is it is intersect principal axis at this point and same way if any ray is normal incident at P if any ray is normal incident at P so this is what normal incidence so then it will not deviate so here angle of incidence is zero so angle of refraction is also zero so this two ray cuts at point I in the principal axis okay so I is your image O is your object so here are some points we have to write that is what so see if I consider here that P is, is the pole so P O is your object distance this is known as your object distance right and object distance is your P O P C this is the radius of the spherical surface so I am writing here R so P C is your radius of curvature radius of curvature and image distance is what from p to i this is known as image distance image distance okay now one thing you have to note down in case of sign convention one thing you have to know in case of sign convention sign convention it is very important so see this is the o point this is plus x axis this is minus x axis this is plus y axis this is the minus y axis right so just try to understand all the distance measured with respect to pole in case of spherical surface if the measured distance is along the incident ray just try to along the incident ray along the incident ray. suppose incident ray is this direction and if you are measuring along the incident ray that distance is your what positive so here i am writing along the incident ray along the incident ray that distance we are taking as positive and opposite to incident ray to the incident ray that is equal to your negative so these are the main sign, sign conventions okay so pi is your image distance pc is your radius of curvature po is your object distance now 
let's us talk about some angles suppose if i consider this angle is alpha this angle is your beta and this angle is your what gamma right this thing now we are considering the aperture is very small so all the angles alpha gamma beta i are all the angles will be very very small so if i apply the snell's law at point a so from the snell's law what we can write from snell's law snell's law what we can write from the snell's law that is equal to n1 into what that is equal to n1 into sin i is equal to n2 into sin r actually sin i by sin r is equal to n2 by n1 this is the laws of refraction refractions so n1 into i is equal to n2 into r why i have written because already i have told angle is very small so sin i can be written as i and sin r can be written as r okay as the angle is very very small so we can write here sin i is equal to your i sin i is equal to written as i and sin r is written as r so this is n1 i is equal to n2 r so what we can do now if i draw a perpendicular from the a point if i draw a perpendicular from the a point this perpendicular intersect principal axis at m point okay so if this you can understood so then i is equal to what try to understand i is equal to just see if we consider triangle aoc try to understand if i consider triangle here i am drawing triangle aoc if i consider i is the external angle so external angle will be what sum of two opposite internal angle so i is equal to alpha plus gamma same way if i consider the triangle a c i here what you can say gamma is the external angle and its opposite internal angle is r and beta so i can write here gamma is equal to r plus beta okay so if you can understood this one r plus beta so r is equal to gamma minus beta okay so if you consider this one so in one into just i substitute the value of i that is alpha plus gamma and n2 into small r that is equal to your gamma minus beta okay so i can write here which things that is n1 alpha and this is what n2 gamma minus n2 beta so i can write here n2 into beta is equal to n2 minus n1 into gamma right if you simplify this one then you can easily understood okay because if you calculate n1 alpha this is minus n2 beta so if you put it left side this will be plus n2 beta and is equal to n2 gamma and n1 gamma is here so if you put here right side so this is your minus n1 gamma so then that is equal to what alpha beta gamma how you can calculate how you can calculate the alpha beta gamma so here for this reason here we are considering which things here we are considering the triangle a m o okay if i consider the triangle a m o here i am writing triangle a m o okay this triangle so see tan alpha alpha is very small so alpha we can written as tan alpha why see alpha is very small then alpha sin alpha is equal to what alpha and cos alpha is equal to what one so tan alpha is equal to what sin alpha by cos alpha okay so tan alpha means here alpha so see as the alpha is equal to small so we can write alpha is equal to tan alpha okay otherwise not as the alpha is very small so tan alpha is equal to what very simple things perpendicular by base 
so perpendicular is equal to here am base is equal to your mo but try to understand as the aperture is very small so m point and p point is very close to each other so we can write here what am by po try to understand am by po okay and am this is the height i am right assuming here this is h so this is i am writing h and po is your object distance try to understand an object distance is taken as minus u why minus because try to understand incident ray is this direction o to p and you are measuring p to o that is your opposite sense incident ray is o to p and you are measuring p to o this is your opposite sense so in case of opposite to the incident ray is your what negative so for this reason p o you are writing here minus u okay same way beta is nearly equal to your tan beta right and tan beta is equal to a m divided by m i m i okay a m means perpendicular m i is equal to your base so that is equal to what same way we can write a m is a m and m and p point this p point is very close to each other so we can write here p i and see this p i means what p i is equal to your image distance but image distance will be positive or negative think see incident ray is this directions and you are measuring the image distance from p to i okay you are measuring the image distance from p to i this is your image distance and this is along the incident ray right you are measuring from p to i you are measuring along the incident ray incident ray is this direction and you are measuring along the incident ray this will be your plus v so here i am writing h divided by plus v same way what is your gamma gamma is equal to your tan gamma that is equal to what tan gamma is equal to a m divided by what mc i can write here mc and c this i can write am divided by pc is equal to h divided by pc is equal to your what r capital r so here i am writing plus r okay so this you can put as equation number 1 and all these equations i can put it equation number 2 okay you can think it is equation number 2a it is 2b it is 2c okay so from this equation so we can this is your equation number 1 so from this equation just see from equation 1 what we can write in 1 into alpha means what h by minus u right plus n2 into beta is equal to what h by plus v okay is equal to n2 minus n1 gamma means what h by plus r because r is also positive it is along the incident ray so h by plus r right so if you see the equations then you can easily say that this if h h h cancelling if you see this equation then see here h cancelling in both side and see i can write here n2 by v minus n1 by u this is minus n1 by u is equal to n2 minus n1 by r so this is your equations of refraction through the spherical surface okay so that means what that is equal to n2 by n1 n2 by v this is very very important equation i can put it equation number 3 and both side both side if you divide it by n1 both side if you divide it by n1 so you can easily write both side if you divided n1 both side if we divided by n1 so n2 by n1 into v minus n1 by n1 into u is equal to n2 
minus in one by in one into a both side we are dividing by in one now this equation here i am writing so n2 by n1 we are assuming as n by v minus n1 by n1 means what one okay n2 by n1 means n minus n1 by n1 means one by okay this is also you can write n by v minus 1 by u is equal to n minus 1 divided by capital R. Okay. So, this is your equations. Okay. This is your very important equations. So, here the object is placed at rear medium and image is formed at denser medium. So, this is the equations. Okay. Thank you.